Hey tubers, today we're working on a 2011 Dodge Ram. Customer complaint is uh, the battery goes dead on the truck if it sits for a period of more than uh, a couple hours. Um, they got dropped off in my driveway and as I walked up on the truck I heard the cause of the battery drain. I didn't know what it was at the time. It turns out it was a fuel pump. Let me show you what I found. So almost every Dodge product has this right here these days and this is called the Tipim. It's a totally integrated power module. It's basically the uh, fuse box relay panel for the whole vehicle. And this little guy right here is the uh, fuse for the fuel pump circuit. None of these relays however are the relay for the fuel pump circuit because for what God knows what reason Dodge made the fuel pump relay integrated to the back side of the circuit board so you got to take this right apart the, the the relay is actually soldered into the circuit board stupid I know right these things go bad all the time what what was wrong with making this a fuel pump relay it goes bad we can swap it out so the fix the correct fix would be a new one of these and they're quite expensive even used they're they're about 300 bucks used on eBay and then you, you don't know if you're getting a good one or not because why is it on there? You know, is it on there because somebody took it out because the fuel pump relay didn't work? Um, I should mention that uh, not all of them go bad and the relay sticks on. Most of them go bad and the relay doesn't work and it gets misdiagnosed as a bad fuel pump. And yeah, so let me show you what the fix is. So I went online and I found out that they make an external relay kit. This is right from uh, Mopar and this basically bypasses the relay that's integrated to the TIPM module and right here is the part number and I'll put that in the description um, I bought this I bought this right off of Amazon I want to say somebody told me it was like 90 bucks through the dealer I paid 20 bucks for this on Amazon I just did an Amazon search of the part number however it didn't come with the instructions I suppose the $90 would have came with the instructions So, so everybody watching my video can do the same thing I did and just Google it. And I came up with this right here. This was the second result in the Google search. And you'll notice that this says it's for a 2012 to 2013 Dodge Durango and Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay, this is neither of those vehicles. However, those vehicles, the Dodge Rams, and the Dodge Caravan, Grand Caravan, probably the Chrysler Town and Country, they all use the same tip them. They all use that same uh, uh, fuse panel in the, under the front of the, the vehicle. So all these directions should be the same for all those vehicles. You're just going to see a little bit of a different engine bay layout. So uh, this is something new to me. So uh, let's get to it. I've already unhooked the battery and I'm going to unhook the power for the tipum mostly because part of the relay harness uh, get well the relay harness gets its power from here so you gotta unhook this anyways Now to remove this from the uh, mount, there's these little tabs right here. You just push those in with a flat blade screwdriver and it unlocks them. They're just little locking tabs. It should unlock them. Let me close this. Okay, the directions are telling us that this is a 40 pin connector. And it's telling
telling us that there's a brown wire that's going to pin. F what pin is that? So it's telling us that cavity number 40 has got a brown wire right here. I'm not seeing this white with a yellow tracer, but again, these are for this is these are generic directions, so we can see this blue and this pink and that brown one right there. So there's the blue and pink and here's the brown one. So this is the only brown wire in here. So we're going to give it about an inch. We're going to cut it off. That wire in the connector is no longer going to be used. We're going to put heat shrink tubing over it to seal it off. The kit came with this uh, heat shrink tubing from Chrysler. This is the good stuff. It's got that glue inside. I used to work as a Chrysler tech at a dealership and this was the best heat shrink I've ever used since. So we are going to shrink that down. It's amazing this stuff even shrinks down that small. I was looking at that wire thinking they should have gave me something a little bit smaller. But Once you see the glue come out the end, you're done. That's sealed. Okay, you'll see that the uh, relay, what's convenient about this relay is the fact that all the wires uh, correlate. So this brown wire goes to that brown wire, we're going to have a pink wire and we're going to have a blue wire. According to the directions anyway, as long as this is wired the same as uh, uh, the, uh, the application that I bought this for. So. The kit came with these fancy little brass uh, crimp connectors for putting the wires together. Well, I almost made a mistake. Ooh, I would have been mad. Don't forget to put your heat shrink on before you crimp the wires together and solder them, or you'll be mad. third set of hands here. Oh, that didn't work out as good as I thought it was gonna.
tug test. It's not coming apart. We're going to cover it up. Okay, once this is complete, we can plug this back in. So we're all done with it now. And we're going to pull this one out right here. And there's a little locking tab on the bottom. If you push in on that with your finger or your thumb, and pull on that lever at the same time, wiggle this connector, it should come right out. Okay, yeah, that's that little locking tab right there. See, when that's, uh, well, let me show you. That's one of them, like that right there. So when this is locked, this is locked down in. You just gotta push that in, and then you can slide that up. But we're gonna push it back down because we gotta take this off. There's four little tabs that hold this black plastic cover on, and I think it'll slide right out of there with that piece pushed down. There we go. Let's see, we are looking for blue with orange trace. Blue. Right there, let me make sure that's the right pin. Yep, that's it right there. So this is the next wire we're after, this blue one right here. We're going to repeat the same process we did for the uh, brown wire. We're going to cut this blue wire off, we're going to put heat shrink tubing on it, and we're going to solder it into our new harness. They tell you to cut it an inch. I wonder if that's in case you do the wrong one and you got to hook it back up, you know? Let's pull that out of there. Shrink tubing on there. And once you see the glue come out, you're done. That is sealed now weather tight so they say Stay there. Dang it. Well, 
bugger. That didn't work, did it? Alright, I'm going to just get rid of this and do it the old fashioned way. I'm going to just solder these wires together. Let me pull a little bit more off here. Those little crimps that came with, uh, they're a special, they're, there's a special tool that they send to the dealerships for using those. I don't have them. kind of wonder how many of the dealership guys actually use them or do they just solder the stuff. I know when I was at the dealership we didn't have those. We soldered stuff. It's a good idea to let it cool down a little bit before you try to slide the heat shrink tubing over it because there's been a couple times where I soldered something then I went to slide the heat shrink tubing over and it picked up on that heat and started to shrink before I was able to get the tubing into place. Okay, now it's telling us that we need to take this uh, the lock piece out. This uh, green piece right here locks all the terminals into place. You'll see what I mean in a minute. This thing should just pry out of here. Should. I need a, need a smaller screwdriver here. It's coming. Let me get a pick. Okay, that comes out, and it says a pink, we're looking for a pink with green trace, diagonal down from the brown. So here's the brown, pink with green trace, here's pink, I don't see a green tracer on it. That looks like, oh, it's right here, Durr, right in front of me. Alright, let me double check. Okay, this is our next one, this pink one. Now it wants us to remove the terminal from the connector because we have to splice a wire into it without cutting it. This still needs to be connected here. And the only way to put the heat shrink tubing on it is if you remove it. If you weren't going to use heat shrink tubing, which isn't advised, but you can do it that way. You don't have to take that, uh, you don't have to take this lock off and remove the terminal, but it's pretty easy to do. So let's, it's this terminal right here. They sell a tool for doing this. I can't find mine. Uh, the book or the instructions there say to use special tool number blah 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 but basically what it is there's a little little retaining tab in here and if you take a pick just like that and slide it over you can usually get the... T I just need a third hand. Damn it. Had it. Let's see if I can grab it. I'm trying to do it so you guys can see but it's pretty difficult here to there. Just like that. Just note how this goes in because this is square. See the little cut out there? That's so that it hits that tab when it locks back in. So when we put this back in, we want to make sure that that goes in the same way, just like that right there. We don't want to turn it sideways or turn it that way. It won't, the pin won't lock. Okay. Pretty sure the pink wire is going to go to that, huh?
Okay, so what it wants us to do is it wants us to strip a little bit of the wire back and solder this wire into that, leaving this one continuous loop. And uh, by taking the uh, terminal out, we'll, we're able to slide the heat shrink tubing over it. So, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to cut it off and, and, and then solder it all together, you could do that too. But uh, we'll try to do it without uh, cutting it here. We'll see how that goes. heat this up a little bit because a lot of times if you heat up this insulation here it's easier to pry it back and access the wire All right, we gave that a minute to cool off. Now let's uh, put it back into place the way it's supposed to be. That's that pin right there. It's that little square. We want to make sure that our little the catch pin is on the outside. So so we want to make sure that that little cavity goes towards the outside. So let's put that in there. We should be able to hear it click or. There it goes. She's in there. A little tug test, not going anywhere. Don't forget to put your uh, your lock piece back in. Okay. And let's see now. This goes like that. We want to put our cover back on. Snap that back into place. And make sure you do this right here. Put your uh, put your tab all the way up because once you put that in there, if it's down, you'll get it stuck because then you got to push it down to lock it in. So put your tab up like that. Turn this bugger upside down. Push it into place, and it, as you're pushing it in, push that little gray lever down. It'll actually suck it right into place and lock it in. Make sure it's locked. We're good. Now, the only thing we have left to uh, install is this right here. This must be a fuse for that fuel pump. Hey, look at that, a brand new fuse for said fuel pump. Okay. Weather, weather tight. So the only thing we have left to do is install this, and that's going to go where we took that uh, power off. So let's see if we can get this 
all to sit down in there all nice. You want that to be able to go around to there. And then maybe we'll find a nice resting place for our relay. It didn't come with a screw. It came with a push pin. Probably because it was for a caravan application. It came with a push pin. I'm gonna, maybe I could mount it somewhere here. I want it to be able to, I want the battery to hit it. Well, the battery's not even, doesn't even have a hold down thing in here. I want it somewhere where the owner won't screw it up. But I want it mounted this way so it doesn't catch moisture. But anyway, let's do this right here. Let's uh, let's test it, right? So let's. I think it's fixed. I just put the battery terminal back on and I don't hear the fuel pump running. And before, you'd hear the fuel pump running all the time. So if the vehicle starts, then I know this took care of it. The only thing I have left to do is I'm gonna trim a little bit off of this uh, edge right here so that this can close. I don't really see an easier way to, to do that, to uh, run that wire, because it's sealed every other way. So let me uh, tighten that up.
so that was a pretty straightforward fix on a repair job that it was my first time doing it. Um, anybody could probably do this. Um, if you're experiencing this problem on a Chrysler vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's a Dodge Ram, Town & Country, uh, Caravan, well, Durango Jeep, I'll put uh, the part number that I used in the description, and as long as it's got the same uh, tip them, it'll, it'll be the same repair. It'll just look a little bit different under the, under the hood, but the instructions are real easy to follow. And again, I just Google them online and I found them. So if this video helped you out, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate the support. Thanks, guys.